Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. I'd like to read you a reading from one of my friends. I don't know how to pronounce that for OSP EL. I don't know what you're trying to say there. But anyway, this one is called why I started 30 day vulnerability hunting challenge before going full time. And I apologize for that, by the way, by, for the butchering of your name. But this is a great article. It's written on July 26th. Before I get into it, today's video is sponsored by me. Yes, that's right. Yours truly, your dearest uncle. First of all, there's going to be a giveaway in this video of one month of Try Hack Me. So what do you need to do? You need to share this video on any social media that I am on, which is LinkedIn or which is X. And you can tag me at the XSS Red or Wesley Thijs. And you need to share this video because I feel like this guy deserves it. He, this is a great article. And a second thing that I would like to say is that I've created a bug bounty platform. This is supposed to emulate a proper bug bounty platform for my new bug bounty guide for my new lab. Basically, I have four new labs, even five new labs, and I've even added one hidden on top of that. And I've thrown a few other labs in here. But the idea is that you can report stuff and you can get on the leaderboards. If things are triaged, which we do in our staff queue, if things are triaged, you get rewarded points. If you get a duplicate, you only get 10% of the points. So it pays off to be the first on this platform. I'm going to put an invitation code for 50 people in the description below. And if you want to get in besides that, you're going to have to buy one of our amazing bundles, 900, the ultimate hackers toolkit. I'm going to put that in a link in the description, of course, and 902 or just buy the 005 course if you already have the other ones. So what do I want to read today for you? For a while now, I've been thinking about going full time into vulnerability hunting. It's something that really interests me. I enjoy the process, testing apps, finding weaknesses, reporting them, and the idea of turning it into full time work just feels right. But at the same time, I know I can't just jump into it with no real experience. I've submitted a few reports before, some got accepted, others were marked as dupes, informative or not applicable. And to be honest, most times I didn't fully understand why they're closed that way. So I decided to do something about it. I gave myself a challenge. Hunt for vulnerabilities every single day for 30 days. No skipping, no overthinking, just keep learning and reporting every day. It's not about how much I earn or how many valid reports I get. The goal is to understand the full process, from hunting to submitting to learning from the response. I want to learn how triagers think. This is a great attitude to have as hackers, guys. This is something which is pretty much obligated in my opinion. That attitude of I want to learn how things work. That can be in many different ways and aspects. This guy wants to learn how triagers think. It's also important that you want to learn how applications actually work. So one of the biggest reasons I'm doing this challenge is to learn how triagers think. These are the people who review our reports. They decide whether a vulnerability is valid, whether it has impact and whether it deserves a reward. Sometimes a report gets closed and you don't know why. You feel like you found something serious, but then it's marked as informative or not applicable. That can be frustrating, but I'm starting to learn that those decisions usually have a reason behind them. Maybe the vulnerability doesn't really affect anything important. Maybe it's already known. Maybe it's a duplicate of someone else's report, or maybe I just didn't explain it well enough. Had that on ChatGPT a while ago. I found what I thought was, in my opinion, a pretty easy to understand impactful bug, but the triager still asked me questions about it, so it wasn't fully understood. So he's not the only one. I still do that. I still make that mistake. Was there real user or business impact? Did I show that clearly in my report? Was the issue more of a UI bug than a security problem? These small reflections are helping me get better faster. 
not all vulnerabilities matter to the program. This is an important realization. Do you need to prove impact? That's one thing. But some programs, like for example, if I have a business to business application where people get hired and then they get an account on my internal systems, I don't care about internal XSS at that point. Often. Not always, but often. So that's an important point to realize. I love it. Before this challenge, I used to think that any vulnerability was worth reporting. I thought that once I found out something was wrong, I should submit it. But this challenge is teaching me that the impact matters more than the issue itself. Let me give you an example. I once found an idol where I could access a different user's order ID. I reported it, but it got marked as informative. Why? Because the order ID didn't lead to anything private. No names emails, phone numbers, or payment info. The company didn't consider it a real risk. At first I was confused, but then later I got it. Just because something can be accessed doesn't mean it's dangerous. If it doesn't expose sensitive data <coughs> or cause harm, it may be a priority for it may not be a priority for the company. So I'm learning not to just look for vulnerabilities, I'm learning to look for vulnerabilities with real impact ones that matter, systems or business operations. That's a big mind sh mindset shift, and it's something I want to fully understand before I go full time. Good on you, bro, you're doing an amazing job. All of these characteristics show me that you really know what you're talking about. I'm building my own workflow and habits. Another reason I chose this challenge is to build my own way of working. I'm learning which tools to help find things faster and figuring out how to take good notes organize my repo, test APIs properly, and write clear reports. When you're just getting started, it's easy to copy what others are doing. But during this challenge, I'm seeing what works for me. For example, I prefer using tools like Burp Suite with manual testing rather than huge automated scans. I realized that reporting too early without full details often gets my report rejected or marked as needs more info. These little things might not sound big, but they're more important if you want to do this full time. You need your own system, you need discipline, and you need to know when to move on from a target or when to dig deeper. This challenge is helping me figure it all out. I love it, man. You're really, this is touching on core principles of bug hunting. This is touching on impact on this has already been pen tested. We want the extreme bugs, the things which are not easy to find in a pen test, the things that are on that one endpoint where there still lives an idler that wasn't fully tested or something like that. But that idler then needs to have impact because in a pen test, you can mark everything. It will just get marked maybe as informative or as low, but you need to mark on it. Here, it doesn't matter to these companies if you present an IDOR without full impact. Another good example of that is a GUID IDOR. A, like if you, so like you can reference an object by a number, one, two, three, four, five, but you can also reference it by one of those long strings, one of those hex GUIDs that you sometimes see. Well, if you have an IDOR in that, but you can't find that GUID anywhere, it doesn't mean that it's impactful or important to the company. Great that you're realizing these things. Rejections are not failures. Honestly, this is one of the most important things I've learned so far. In the beginning, every time a report was closed, I took it personally. I felt like I wasn't good enough or maybe I didn't understand this space. But now I see things differently. Every rejection is just information. If it's marked informative, I probably didn't show impact. If it's duplicate, someone else found it first, but I'm still on the right path. This is so important to realize. I see so many people crying that they got a duplicate. That's okay, you're learning, you're finding things, you're actually finding things that matter. So just keep doing that. Eventually that duplicate will turn into a accept hit. If it's not applicable, maybe it's not a real issue or maybe I didn't understand something. I'm no longer afraid to get a report closed. I now try to learn why it was closed. That's a better use of my time than just being upset. 
Great, I love you, man. You're doing a great job. This challenge is my training ground. I look at this challenge as practice before the real game. Once I finish this 30 day challenge, I'll have a better idea of what to expect when I go full time. I'll understand how two users think, what programs accept, and what kind of vulnerabilities are worth focusing on. So even if I don't find anything major during these 30 days, I know I'll come out. If, of, uh, I'll come out of it better prepared. My apologies there, dear F. I didn't start this challenge to prove anything. I started it to learn and to prepare for the real thing. Full-time vulnerability hunting is something I'm working towards and I want to do it right. So one important remark here is that with all due respect, but you're probably from a lower income country. What does that have to do with bug hunting? It's easier to go full time when you need $700 a month versus $4,000 a month, for example, to live. And it, this is a really important realization to make. I'm not saying that you shouldn't try this, that's your thing. But what you need to realize is first do it consistently outside of your work, like just out in your free time in the weekends. Do it consistently and be able to consistently report bugs. Even if it's just like one critical every two months, that's enough. If you can do it every two months without hesitation and it's a critical that gets you 30,000 euros. I mean, I can live with 15,000 euros a month and just saying. So I didn't start this challenge. I do a so if you ever wonder why someone's doing a challenge like this or why a report was marked in a certain way, just know there are a lot of learnings happening behind the scenes. Thank you so much, amazing hacker. And thank you for allowing me to read this on my channel. I'm going to put a link to this in the description below. I think this deserves a clap from you guys because there are key points that this guy touches on that I don't see a lot of other hunters reaching. Thank you so much, amazing hackers. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.